If you're watching this video, it's probably because you're interested in learning scripted rigging. This video is going to sort of serve as an explanation for what scripting is and its common applications in Maya. What even is scripting, man? Scripting is the use of a coding language to define a procedure or a specific set of instructions that a computer executes in order. Uh, in our case, we're using scripting to make stuff in Maya. Okay, yeah, but why should you do it, though? Scripting is really useful for repetitive tasks or anything that you have to do more than once. If you've got a complicated procedure and you have to do it 50 times while you're working on a project, you could either do it yourself 50 times or you can make the computer do it for you, which saves you a lot of time. Scripts, contrary to popular belief, also don't have to be very complicated. They could just be a few lines of code if that's all they need to be. So internally, Maya uses a coding language called MEL. You can see this when you do stuff in Maya in the script editor. Maya will automatically spit out a bunch of MEL script whenever you execute a command. Um, and so you can use this to make really simple scripts by just copy and pasting the output from the script editor. I'm going to use Strela here to demonstrate a common kind of scripting. With a rig like this and an animation, it can be really, really useful to have some sort of script or button that will automatically zero out all of your controls or some set of your controls. So like, let's say hypothetically, if I was animating this character, and I'm not going to do anything super complicated. But if I was animating her, and I decided, oh wait, you know what, actually, I want to zero all of this out, but I don't want to have to go through all of my controls and zero them out every single time. It'd be a lot more handy if I could just like hit a button. So what you could do is open the script editor and you'll notice that again, this whole time it's been spitting out code for everything that I've been doing. Uh, so this means that if you zero out all of your controls at once, it'll spit out code that does that. And then if you run that code, it'll do it every time. One thing that a lot of people don't know is that Maya actually has a tool here to select objects by name. By default, I think it's usually set to absolute transform. You can just click on this button and hit select by name and do it that way. So if I go in here and I select all of my controls, and by the way, I'm doing this by typing an asterisk and then a colon, and that'll find any namespace, and then another asterisk, and that'll just fill in any text, and then control, It'll find everything labeled control and select it. So if I hit enter, it selected all my controls. Then I can go into my transforms here and set all of them to zero, like so. And now she's back to zero. If I open up my script editor again, you'll see that it gave me all of this, of it just essentially going through every single control and setting all of them to zero. If I go up to the top here, and copy them and paste them down here where it says Mel. I have essentially just written, quote unquote, a script. Um, now, anytime I run this, and you can run it by selecting all of it and hitting the play button up here, it'll set all of her controls to zero again. I guess I can demonstrate that by posing her somehow. If I run this, it will set everything back to zero. It's a little laggy though. If I want to set this to a button, what I can do is I can go to this custom shelf. You could also make your own shelf in the shelf editor, but I'm not going to do that for this video. You can go to the custom shelf, open your script editor, select everything, and hit this button here that says Save Script to Shelf. If I do that, I can call this Strella Zero. Hit OK. And now I have a very simple MEL script that will just set all of her controls to zero whenever I need to do that. Just to belabor the point, I'll do another example. You can clear all of the script from your script editor with this button here. I'm going to erase all this too. Now I'm going to make a button that will keyframe all of her controls. So to do that, we'll do the same thing. We'll go up here and select all of her controls. And by the way, it doesn't actually matter what you do to select all of the controls, just as long as you're making sure that the ones you want are selected. So I've selected all my controls, and then I can hit S. And you can see in my script editor, that's set a keyframe for every single control. I can do the same thing where I just grab all of this, copy and paste it, and make a button. 
call this Strela key all. And now, on any frame, I can hit this button and it'll key all of the controls. Unfortunately, there are a lot of things that MelScript can't do, and there are a lot of things that the script editor won't give you. Also, for a lot of people, it's a lot easier to write code in Python. Fortunately, uh, Maya supports both Python and Mel, and Maya's documentation page features every single Maya command in its syntax for both Mel and Python. This makes converting between the two languages very easy, especially if you're familiar with one or the other. I personally have this link down there bookmarked on my bookmarks bar, and I refer to it every single time I do anything in Maya for the most part. I'm going to do a quick demo of something where it might be more comfortable to script something in Python over Mel. So here I've got a scene with a bunch of joints in it, and you can see over here my joints all sort of have their naming convention, and that's all this in this scene. And let's say I want to make a bunch of controls and for these joints and a bunch of offset groups for those controls, um, and I want those controls to be oriented to those joints. So the first thing you're going to do is open up your script editor. Uh, we're going to make a new file for Python. When you hit this plus button, it gives you a prompt for Mel or Python. I'm going to choose Python. And we need to figure out what we need to do. So the first step to doing anything in Maya when you're using Python is you have to import maya.cmds as cmds. Uh, the reason you do this is because maya.cmds is a lot to type, and it's a lot easier to have a shorthand. It doesn't actually matter what that shorthand is. I usually use MC, but as long as you're consistent, um, you'll be okay. So the real first step in a procedure like this is we need to identify all of the joints in our scene and store them in a list. So there's an easy way to do this in Maya. There's a function called ls, and it essentially just lists everything. And so the way that that would work is you do like cmds dot, you have to do a dot after that, ls. And you can see ls turns blue, and that means it's a valid command. What we can do here is we can use quotes to denote that we're listing things with a certain name. And now since all of our joints have a different name and we don't want to list them all out individually, we can use an asterisk to rec represent just any string of text and then do underscore JNT. And this is going to find everything that's labeled as a joint in our scene. All right, let's put this in parentheses. Quick clarification, this is not actually going to find everything that's a joint in our scene. It's just going to find everything named joint in our scene. All right, we're going to do FL equals one. That just flattens the list. And then we're going to do type equals joint. This will actually identify everything that's a joint in the scene. And it would be important if we had a bunch of stuff that might have the name joint. Right now, we don't. But, you know, it's good to include it. So the next step is we need to break down how this procedure is going to work. We know that every joint needs a control. Every control needs an offset group. And every offset group needs to be translated and rotated according to the position and orientation of each joint. So this is a perfect job for a for loop. So what we'll need to do first is we need to actually name this. Uh, we'll use scene joints. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking this command and setting it to be named scene joints so that we can call on this later. Now we can do for j and scene joints. And so this is just going to find every element in the scene joints list and go through them one by one. So the first step is we need to make controls. But hold on, you might say, I don't actually know how to make a control with the Python script. Well, lucky for you, Maya will tell you the command for everything in Mel, and we can use the documentation to figure out how to write it in Python. So how do you make a control normally? You go to Create, Nervous Primitives, and you make a circle. OK, so Maya gave us this line of code, circle, dash, c, and a bunch of text. That leads us in the right direction. Let's go to the documentation and type in that circle command that Maya gave us. Ah, here we go. 
So this is all the documentation for this specific command in Maya. And you'll see here that it's all in Mel. We don't want Mel, we want Python. So you can click over here where it says Python version, and this will give us the correct syntax. And so it looks like if we go to Maya, we can identify some of the parameters or flags that it's giving us. We got C, we've got NR, SW, R, bunch of stuff. So you can see up here that C means center, and that just defines where the center point of the circle is. And NR is the normal, which is just the orientation of the circle or which plane it's aligned with. We also have down here N for name. Those are the only three that we're going to be worrying about for this tutorial. So if we look down here how to use it, it'll see you'll see that it says you can do like this, and then you put the flags and define them in parentheses like that. So let's give that a shot. So for each J in scene joints, we want to do let's define our control. So let's call control cmds.circle. All right. Now, what's the next step? We define the normal rotation, and we define the center, and then we can define a name. So, NR. For purposes that I'll explain later, I'm going to set this to 1, 0, 0. This is going to align it with the x-axis, essentially. The center, we'll want that to be at 0. And for our name, what we can do is we want to name each control after each joint. So for the, purpose of the purposes of this, we can use our variable j to represent the name of the joint, or the name of the element in our list. And we can use plus to add that to a string of text. And I'm going to use underscore CRTL. CTRL. That's how you spell. We also know that each control needs an offset group. So, okay. I don't know how to do that in Maya either. So, what would you normally do? Well, you might just select this and do control G to make the group. Okay. There we go. Set it to Python. Look at the documentation. This one seems pretty simple. So let's try out this group command. We'll say offset equals cmds.group. And we don't actually need to specify what we're putting in a group since after we make this, Maya will automatically select it. So if it's selected and we run the group command, it's going to know that this is the thing that we're trying to put in a group. So the only thing we need for the group is the name. And for the name, we're going to do the same trick. We're going to do j plus underscore offs to name it after the joint and then offset. Okay, the next step in our procedure is moving the offset group to the position and rotation of each joint. So we can actually do this with a parent constraint. If you have ever used a parent constraint, you'll know that if you turn off maintain offset, which is this checkbox, if you turn that off, it will move this thing to the parent thing. That's a great explanation. We can take advantage of this in our script without actually having to find the specific coordinates and rotation value for every element. Let's do cmds.parent constraint, which again, you can find documentation for online. We know that the first thing that we would normally select is the joint. So we can just use J. And the next thing that we would normally select is our offset group. So we can just do OFFS and call this function here. If we take a look at the documentation for parent constraints, we can see that there is, in fact, a flag for maintain offset. It's this MO thing. In the Python version, it's just MO. So we'll call that too. MO equals zero, since we do not want to maintain the offset between those two things. Now, this is going to create a parent constraint on our offset group, which we don't actually want. If we had that, the joint would be driving the control and not the other way around. Normally, you'd do another line of 
of code and write something like this and delete the parent constraint, but there's an easier way. This is a pro tip for me to you. You can actually nest commands like this. So if you do the delete command, you can nest your parent constraint command inside of it. And so what this will do is it will create the parent constraint first, and once it's done that, it will delete the parent constraint. And so what you'll wind up with is your offset group will move to your joint, and then the parent constraint will be deleted, and it'll be gone. And that's what you want. Okay, so the final step in this procedure is you're actually going to want to make a parent constraint going the other way, from the control to the joint. So let's do that. CM CMDS.parent constraint. This time we'll go CTRL to J, and we'll do maintain offset with zero. It doesn't actually matter since they're going to be perfectly overlapped anyway. And if we've done everything correctly, this should work perfectly. All right. So it looks like every control has a joint, and <laughs> every joint has a control, and every control has the right name. And it looks like these are driving everything correctly. Since these controls are not in a hierarchy, you'll see that these rotations don't actually work because this is still constrained to this control. If we wanted to fix that, we'd have to go in and put these in a proper hierarchy. I'll be getting more into that stuff in the next video, but I hope this has been uh, illuminating. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you learned something. Okay, that's all. Goodbye.